there's been some questions about how to use uh, unknowns in version 3 of Beyond Labs. So if you click on the link in the lab to bring you to the uh, Beyond Labs version 3 portal, which is this, the green you see in uh, front of you now, you can either sign in with your uh, previously created uh, username and password, which is what I'll do in a moment, or if you have not yet created your account, uh, you can click on create an account down here at the bottom. But like I said, I've already created my account, so I'm gonna go ahead here and sign in. And for us, uh, the labs that we use uh, that have unknowns in them use the inorganic uh, laboratory. So I'm just gonna click on this inorganic tile to launch the inorganic uh, laboratory. And that'll take just a second to load here. Now, normally, uh, when you are ready to work with an unknown, you've been in the lab for some time, and in the virtual environment, you may have various test tubes, beakers, etc., on your lab bench. When you're ready to work with your unknowns, the first thing you want to do is clear any old or miscellaneous uh, reagents from your lab bench. To do that, you're going to click on this red waste disposal bucket where it says clear lab and just give it one click and any test tubes or anything else that you've previously taken out will go away. I didn't have any out, so nothing disappears from my screen, uh, but we just want to make sure that the lab is fully cleared and reset. To create an unknown, the easiest thing to do is just click on this little unknowns label here on the countertop, and when you do, you'll get a switch to this unknowns tab over here on the right, and to create an unknown, just go ahead and click create unknown. In the little window here that opens, um, you first have to indicate how many unknowns, uh, you, how many substances, sorry, you would like in your unknown. In this case, the default is a minimum of zero, meaning there may be none, and a maximum of one. For our purposes, we're going to leave this unchanged. We don't want our unknown to contain any more than one of the possible substances that we select. The second thing that you have to do now is pick which substances might be in your unknown. Uh, and your lab procedure will tell you which substances to select, but in my case, as an example today, I'm going to just pick two. The first one is Ag+, and the second one is Cu2+. So my unknown may contain none of those things or any one of those two ions. I don't know. The computer is going to pick for me. And it's going to pick when I go ahead and click this create button. So I'm going to go ahead and create my unknown. And when you do that, uh, you will notice that a test tube appears in the unknown rack here, pre-fill. To analyze what's in that test tube, go ahead and drag it over to the test tube stand over here on the left and release it. And the first thing I always like to do is be able to see what is in my test tube. So I'm going to click back over here on this live data tab, which will show me a picture of my unknown. And I'm gonna make some observations now. It is a clear colorless liquid before I do anything to it, um, which tells me something in the case of the substances that I picked. So if you look at the reagent bottles on the dark shelf behind you, you'll notice the two, two ions I picked were Ag+, which looks like it could be a clear colorless liquid, and Cu2+, which looks like it's a, probably a uh, robin egg uh, blue, light blue color. And since I don't see any light blue color in my unknown, I'm going to guess this unknown either contains silver or it doesn't contain either substance at all. It probably just contains water. To test uh, whether or not it has silver, I can use anything in the lab at my disposal. For example, I could click on the Bunsen burner down here and conduct a flame test. Now, I happen to know that silver ions do not produce a color in a flame test. So that's not going to help me. So I'm not going to do that today, but it is one of the options. What I do know is that if there are silver ions in my test tube here, if I add some sodium chloride, which is in this dropper bottle over here, uh, I should see a reaction in my test tube window. So I'm going to click on the sodium chloride dropper bottle and add some sodium chloride to my unknown and see what happens. So let's click. And lo and behold, Something did happen. My test tube turned a milky white color. We formed a milky white precipitate. 
And so my suspicions at this point, knowing what I know, is that there's probably silver ions in my unknown. I can check my answer because this is a practice unknown. So I can click back on the unknowns tab here. And you notice it tells me what might be in my unknown. Again, the things I selected were AG plus and CU2 plus. And you notice there's this reveal button. And so if I click on the reveal button, it is going to tell me what is in my unknown. Um, I think it's the silver ions, the AG plus. And so if I'm right, when I click this button in just a moment, the silver ion should turn bright blue and the copper two plus ion should be grayed out or go away. So let's click that button and you notice I was correct. The silver button does turn bright blue indicating that ion is present in my unknown and there is no CU2 plus and it gets uh, grayed out. I hope you found this video informative showing you how to work with the unknowns in Beyond Labs version uh, 3.0.